1 Corinthians 11, 20, uh, 23 through 26. This is, uh, this is what Paul said. Paul said, For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks for it. He broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. So, since we started this church, it just seemed good to me and to the Holy Ghost to have communion the first Sunday of every month. I like it. I, you know, I'm not, now, now listen to me. You can have communion every day if you want to. You can have it twice a day if you'd like to. You can have it anywhere you're at. But don't ever let this become a ritual to you. Don't let it just become a tradition. This is to be done in faith and there is power in the cup. Jesus, you know, I find it very interesting that on the very last night that Jesus was with his disciples, he instituted this covenant, this communion. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, the Jews pa uh, celebrate Passover. Do you, everybody know what Passover is? Or, uh, you know, when they, they, they killed the lamb and they slung the blood, they took a hyssop branch and they slung the blood above their doorpost. I mean, they just flung blood everywhere. And then they ate the lamb for sustenance. They ate it in haste. And the death angel came, and when the death angel saw the blood over the door, what did he do? He passed over. It says they ate the lamb for sustenance when they wandered in the wilderness uh, for all those years. Did you know what it said? It said there was not one feeble among them. Did you know that? There was not one feeble. Among, you would think among three million plus people, there was at least one feeble. There is such power in the blood. And in the new covenant, we use the hyssop of our tongue. And I have heard some preachers say, oh, you know, you don't need to plead the blood. You don't. I, when, when Jesus, if you listen and you look at how Jesus prayed, he would plead his case. He would say what the word says before the Father. When the devil came to tempt him, how did, did he fight him by saying, hey, I'm Jesus, the son of God? No, he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And so when I plead and apply the precious blood of Jesus, I do it with the hyssop of my tongue and I say, Lord, I plead. I apply the blood over my family, over my life, my wife, my family. I apply it over my chickens. <laughs> and when I get lazy and forget about it, bad things happen because they fall, they're not under the protection. Are you listening? So, we're remembering in communion. It's a, it is a, we should never let it be a ritual. It's a time where we reflect we give ourselves a spiritual exam. Are you listening to me? Now listen, we are not condemning ourselves. We've been washed in the blood. We've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But it's a time where, where we reflect and uh, we take, we look at our lives and we, those areas that we're falling short. What are you falling short of? We're falling short of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, I fall short in no area, brother. Well, get up here and start preaching then. We've all, we're all pressing. 
I said the Bible says press toward the mark. We're all pressing toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You've been made the righteousness of God in the one instance. You have a right to approach God. But at the same token, we spend the rest of our lives being transformed into his image and his likeness. Amen. Because we got flesh to crucify and mortify. Mortify. That means put to death. Are you listening? Thank you for listening. So we're taking those areas that we fall short, that we judge as falling short, and we put them under the blood, remembering that Jesus died to set us free from all iniquity as well as all sickness and disease. We remember that his resurrection is our resurrection. I said his resurrection is your resurrection. His victory is your victory. You've been made more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. So, I find it interesting that on that last night, he gave them communion and told them, hey, I want you to do this. This is now the Christian Passover meal. This is where Jews remember the Passover. We remember what Jesus did. And the devil has nothing in us now. Amen? Amen? So, it's also interesting to note that on his last night with the disciples, because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. We're to remember what Jesus did for us. It's also interesting to note that on the last night with his disciples, when Jesus taught on communion, he also taught them that he would not leave them orphaned. He would not leave them alone. He actually said, you know what? It's better for you that I leave. He said he would send another comforter, someone just like him, he said. If you look up the Greek word, it says when it says another, it means, that Greek word is A-L-L-O-S, and it means another just like me. He'll send another just like me, Jesus said, I'll send another just like me to live and reside inside you and abide there forever. How many believe Jesus told the truth? Jesus said, it's better. He said, hey guys, it's better for you. Now, can you imagine they were with him for three years? They walked the sandy shores of Galilee with him. They saw him when he calmed the sea, when he spoke to the storm and, and uh, rebuked the storm. They saw him cast out demons. They saw him heal the lepers. They saw him raise the dead. They saw blind eyes open. Can you imagine? They sat at his feet for three years. They did everything he, everything he told them to do. Everything he said that they could do, they went out and they did. Can you imagine when he said, hey, I'm leaving you guys, what they felt like? Like, man, we've left everything to follow you and you're leaving us? But Jesus said, no, I'm telling you this, it's better for you. It's better for you that I go because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. He's just like me. He'll tell you everything I say to him. He'll remind you of everything I said. And guess what? He's going to live right inside you. Amen. And he's going he's to move in there forever. Are you listening? So we need to remember. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 14, 25 through 26 in the New Living says, I'm telling you, the, Jesus said this, I'm telling you these things now while I'm still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit. Who'd been teaching the disciples up to this point? Jesus. Jesus. One on one. Well, one on twelve. <laughs> He'd been teaching them personally, training them, teaching them, 
showing them, demonstrating what the kingdom of God was like, demonstrating the love of God, demonstrating the anointing and the power of God on a daily basis. And he said, but now, it's, this is better for you. He wasn't lying. He wasn't like, well, I'm just going to try to make them feel better. He was not lying. He was telling the truth. He said, it's better for you. And he said that, but when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I've told you. Since you've been born again, you ever had the Holy Spirit just remind you of what Jesus did? You know, you could, you could say this. Uh, Jesus, Jesus said, you know, I will not leave you as orphans in this world. He said, it's better for you. I, I don't know if you've really thought about it, but the disciples, those 12, he said, Jesus said, it's going to be better for you. One, someone just like me is going to come and live inside you. Someone just like me. Now, it's really a mystery, isn't it? How can God... You know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then how can the Holy Spirit, how can he be in all of us at the same time? I'm really not smart enough to figure that one out. It's a mystery. But I'll tell you what. God invented quantum physics. God invented time and space. He made it. He invented it. God's pretty sharp. In fact, the the truth is, uh, we cannot really fellowship on an intellectual level. That's why we have to fellowship spirit to spirit with God. Because I'm telling you, God is amazing. But I have read on quantum physics. I've read things about how time and space, I, I believe God knows how to do it. Because I do believe this too. I believe that Holy Spirit's in me and I believe he's in you. I believe he's in every born again believer. And I've seen him operate through them. Are you listening? So, God's a triune being. We kind of sang that this morning. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And these three are one and the same. Yet they're three distinct persons. And that is a complete mystery. But, you know... uh, Yeah, I'm going to share that. I don't, I don't know if anybody, has, have you ever seen Jesse Duplantis, uh, a video or listened to his tape, Close Encounters of the God Kind, where he uh, went to dinner, and when he got his dinner, he had just this tremendous unction that I got to go pray, and his dinner wasn't even served yet, and he told the people he was eating, I got to go. And he got up, and then he just went to his hotel room, and when he knelt down on the floor, he was in, the pre- he was in heaven. He was in the presence of God. And he he goes through the whole uh, thing that happened. But uh, he was taken to the throne of God. And he couldn't look on the face of God. But he said the power that just emanated from the throne. And the glory of God was around him. And the power. He said the angels are flying around him going, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. And he said he could see the Father's hands on the throne. Do you remember this part? And he said he saw the Father's little pinky finger twitch like that. Just a twitch. Little twitch. And he said there was such power that one of the angels was in front of him when that finger twitched and that angel went flying across the room. And then Jesse said, as he was watching, there was a big crowd gathering. And he said, he saw Jesus step out of the Father and go over and start preaching to the crowd. And he said, you know, I'd always thought of Jesus as kind of just a teacher. He said, let me tell you, he can preach. 
And he was preaching to the crowd in heaven saying, I'm going back soon and I'm going to get your sons and your daughters and your relatives and your friends and I'm going to bring, I mean, and the crowd was erupting. And Jesse said, I got a glimpse and a revelation of these three are one. And he said, he, when he stood there, I guess it was an angel was, was showing him around heaven. Was it an angel? It was his angel. And he turned to the angel and he said, uh, he said, oh, there's the Father and the Son. Where's the Holy Spirit? He said, where's Holy Spirit? The third person of the Godhead. He said, where's Holy Spirit? And the angel kind of looked at him like, I think the angel was giving him a little chance to figure it out, but the angel looked at him and said, well, he's on earth right now. And Jesse like, oh, yeah. And he indwells us. He indwells these vessels of clay. And my brother and sister, you know you don't deserve that. You know you have not earned that. But it is a heavenly gift. And we get to go through life with that greater one indwelling us. That ought to take the wine out of our voice, no matter what's happening. Because, you know, this just came to my remembrance, but I was working on the back of a garbage truck. I was not even the garbage truck driver. I was on the back throwing the trash in the back, you know. Yeah, I hadn't even been promoted to driver yet. And I had a college degree. But at that time, it was the only job I could find. And I had been a, was a born again, I'd just gotten born again, a brand new Christian. And I'm telling you this, if you don't humble yourself, God has a way of squeezing the pride out of you. <laughs> I mean, my grandmother had one of those washing machines, Grandma Early. She had a washing machine and had these two white rollers. <laughs> and when they got done, she'd take it out of the wash and she'd put it into that ringer and it would, oh. it would ringer would roll and all the, all the excess water would be squeezed out. I know you young people uh. looking. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't even have automatic washing machines. We had a ringer. Yep. And then you hung it out on the clothesline. Uh -huh. <laughs> Even in the winter. Yep. <laughs> and they would dry in the, they would freeze and still dry out. Yep. Freeze dried, baby. Yeah. But I'm telling you what, if we don't humble ourselves, God has a way of putting you through the ringer. Yeah, I don't want to go through the ringer anymore. I've learned some lessons going through the ringer, but I'd rather not go through the ringer. But anyway, I'm working on the back of the garbage truck. And I, and it's miserable. It's worse in the summer. Because there's maggots. And there's stank. And I'm working on the back of the garbage truck and I'm feeling sorry for myself. And I thought, I'm going to talk to the Lord about this. I said, Lord, you know, I'm just whining. Lord, you have no idea what it's like working on the back of this truck. You never had to work on the back of a garbage truck. I'm going on and on and on and on and on about it. Just telling him, you know, just whining. And I finally got all my wine out and stopped. And I heard the Holy Ghost. 
down on the inside, and this was his tone of his voice. He said, what do you think I'm doing right now? And I'm like, man, I forgot. You never leave me. You're inside me. Are you listening? See, he's with us. We... So as we partake of communion today and remember everything Jesus did for us, let's also remember that he prayed and Father sent us the Holy Spirit. You're not alone. Never. And I believe I'm going to speak on this a little more next week, but today we need to remember that Jesus sent Holy Spirit and we need to remind ourselves to develop an intimate relationship with Holy Spirit. Intimate. He lives in you, he lives in me, but he'll just keep to himself if we don't actively pursue a relationship with him. He's a gentleman. He, he's not gonna butt in. You know, I might butt into your affairs. My wife butts into mine all the time. But Holy Spirit, he waits till you, you pursue him. He waits till you ask him. He waits till you talk to him. He's a gentleman. And even though he knows all, everything there is to know, has all the answers you're looking for, if you don't pursue a relationship with him, he'll just sit there quietly, let you go on your own way. Thank you for that one, mm-hmm. <laughs> Holy Spirit is a person. Jesus said the world could not receive him. Jesus used that, you know, he used the illustration about you can't put new wine into an old wineskin. And so, uh, uh, because the new wineskin would just burst. You put that, I mean, you put that new wine in and that old wineskin that's all dried and cracked up and everything, when that, starts to ferment, it just burst it. So that's how it is with the Holy Spirit. People in the world, your old sin nature, your old spirit cannot receive the Holy Spirit because it just blow up. I mean, I'm just not literally, but God recreates your spirit the moment you accept Jesus, the moment you're born again, and Holy Spirit. He gives you a brand new spirit, a brand new, you become the new wineskin. And the Holy Spirit takes up residency in your spirit. He permanently moves in. And if you let him, he'll change and rearrange everything. He's got a lot of decorating he'd like to do but he won't do anything unless you allow it. Are you listening? Yeah. First Corinthians 2.14 says this. It says, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Does it say that the uh, thing, spiritual things, the things of the Spirit of God are intellectually discerned? No. Does it say they're theologically discerned? No. So you must be born again to really gain an understanding of what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. You must be born again to understand and to begin to understand the person, the purpose, and the power of Holy Spirit. Carnal and natural-minded Christians, did you know there's carnally, some Christians are carnal, not in this church, but do you know there's carnally-minded Christians? Did you know that? What does that mean? That means they're born again, but they're still allowing their flesh to rule them. Can that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Has it ever happened to you? Yeah. 
I found my flesh can rise up in an instant. Yeah, Jesus said crucify the flesh and the deeds thereof. Mortify your men. <laughs> Daily, yes. Yeah. Now, just before church on Sunday, I do it. Once a week. So carnal and natural-minded Christians I have a difficult time with the Holy Spirit. Have you ever noticed that? That's why Paul prayed in Ephesians, the first, and Colossians, the first chapters, that God would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, and that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened, that we would know and understand the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Paul said, open their eyes. Paul didn't say, hey, God, do something more for them. God, Paul said, open their eyes to what Jesus has already done for us. That's what he's praying, that we'll know and understand everything that Jesus has done for us. And one of those things that Jesus has done for us is given us the Holy Spirit. I heard Mark Hankin say this years ago, and I have just adopted it. I say it all the time. Do you know the Holy Spirit will make you look like a genius if you let him? You ought to get up every morning and look in the mirror and say, man, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the greater one in me makes you look like a genius. Amen? Amen? Come on, you ever, had, you ever had that happen? It makes me laugh. I've, there have been times where I've been in a meeting and I felt so stupid, a business meeting. I'm like, I don't know, I say something and it's like, wow, that's the answer. You know, you want to take all the credit. <laughs> but you realize, holy ghost, you are something else. You make you look, he'll make you look like a genius. He'll give you favor. He'll give you divine wisdom and understanding. He knows everything. Guess where he's living? Point to where he's living. He's living in you. He's living in you. So I said, Paul wasn't praying that God would do something new for us. He was praying that God would allow us to see and understand what he's already done for you and me. Holy Spirit is our advocate. He's our spiritual advisor. He's our teacher. He helps your memory. He strengthens you. He stands by you. He intercedes for you. He'll tell you everything Jesus wants to tell you, and he wants you to know the very heart and thoughts of God. Did you know that? Because religion has taught us that, oh, we just can't know the mind of God. We can't know, again, you can never tell what God wants to do. Well, he's living inside you, and he ain't withholding anything from you. He wants to freely give you all things. He wants to make you look like a genius. So that when you're walking in the store, where you're anywhere, you're interacting with people, they're going to like, wow, I'm talking to a genius. And then they say something to you and you can say, you know what? I got to tell you, the hope that's in me is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Holy Spirit will tell us whatever he says. Holy Spirit is the exact representation of Jesus. Jesus said that word, I'll, give, I'll send another, the Father will send another comforter. That word another means of another of the same identical kind. They're the same identical. Jesus said, whatever I say, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. If you let them. 
1 Corinthians 2, 9 through 11, in the King James. It says, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. And then they just stop right there. Well, you can never tell. You can never know what God wants to do. You just can't tell. But the next verse says, but God has revealed. not is going to, God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Amen. By his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. God wants to share his deep, intimate secrets with you. Come on. We ought to be so, re it makes me rejoice because I know I don't deserve it. I know I couldn't earn it. But Jesus paid the price and then he freely gives it to us. We got an all access pass to the throne, my brother and sister. Backstage. Are you listening? Yeah, free. But it was paid with a mighty price. Woo! You see, the things of God are spiritually discerned. Now, I thank God he gives us an intellect. And he wants us to re renew it. He wants us to renew our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we can. But uh, this, the things of God are spiritually discerned, it says. It's not an intellectual thing. Not a mental thing. And really, it's not a theological thing. Well, we're getting quiet. It's a spiritual thing. The spirit. He said, Paul said, I want to give, give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And spiritual things have to be spiritually discerned. It, it doesn't say this. It doesn't say uh, those that are led by their theology are the children of God. Oh, I thank God for good doctrine. We need sound doctrine. We, we need to be established and rooted and grounded in sound doctrine. Why? Because then when you lead, you're led by the Holy Spirit, you can test the Spirit's leading against the Word of God and against sound doctrine. And if it, the Spirit and the Word will always agree. Are you listening? But the Bible says, as many as are led by the but as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons and daughters of God. I'll just be honest with you. I do not have a theological relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I don't have a theological relationship with them. I have a real, intimate, talking, spiritual face-to-face -face relationship with them. Well, brother, if you got that relationship, you don't need to study the word. No. They'll always point, they'll always, Jesus is the word made flesh. So when we study the word, we're studying Jesus. Are you listening? We're studying the Father. We're studying the Holy Ghost. And all those three will always agree. I read the Bible every day. I will read the Bible every day until I go home to be with the Lord. Uh, I, it's the first thing I do because I got to do it first thing because if I don't, I get distracted. So I got to take the first, time, the first thing in the morning to read my Bible and to pray and to do my devotional. I just take that time in the morning before I... Because life gets busy and I get distracted and when I get onto something... You know, I get that one box out and I'm working on that thing, I got to get that done. And by the time the end of the day comes, I'm like, oh. So I just make myself. I just got to that point. It doesn't, you don't have to spend a lot of time because you could take one scripture and then as you're even going about your day, every once in a while, just start meditating on that scripture. Just speak that scripture to yourself. There's power in it. Life-changing power in the word of God.
So we all need to cultivate a real, everyday relationship with Holy Spirit. I mean, you really should just cultivate. I, I'm just saying, that, you know, you don't have to do this, but like I have, I kind of just look down like Holy Spirit. Oh, you know. I mean, I'm fixing my lawn tractor. I'm, I'm underneath that thing. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I got an idea. I'm trying to put a new drive belt on, but this looks impossible. I'm laying under there. I'm like, this looks impossible. Well, ha. How do I do this? And I mean, I'm getting frustrated. I'm almost about to lose my salvation. I'm almost about ready to cuss. And then I, I'm like, Holy Spirit, hold it, hold it. I remember, hold it. I got a helper. Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, in like an instant, it showed me what to do to remove the guard, the belt guard, which I didn't think I had access to, but I... I, in an instant. And then I can change that belt. I got rid of that tractor because I was having to change it too many times, but I could change it in 10 minutes. The Holy Spirit will make you look like a genius if you let him. The Holy Spirit will save you time if you let him. But we need to cultivate that relationship where we look on the inside and like, Holy Spirit. I told this, I've told this story many, many times, but I was taking a test and I didn't know the answer. And I, I said to the Holy Spirit, oh, Holy Spirit, what's the answer to that question? And he didn't say anything. I said, Holy Spirit, what's the answer to that question? He didn't say anything. I said, Holy Spirit, come on. Now oh, you know the answer. What's the answer to that question? He said, I ain't taking a test for you. He said, but I'll help you. And in that moment, a scripture rose up on the inside of me and I knew what the answer was. He's our helper. He will show you the answers to your questions. He'll show you the things that are headed down the pike, so to speak. He'll show you things to come. He'll advise you in all the affairs of life if you let him. Jesus said... We have it better than the, than the disciples did when he, while he was on this earth. He said, it's better for you. It's better. Because you have someone just like me, the Holy Spirit, inside you. Amen? Can we pass out the elements of communion? Can I get some people to pass them out? And please listen to me while they're doing that. So today... While in obedience to the Lord Jesus, we partake of communion. Among the things he did for us, we remember that he sent Holy Spirit. Who are we remembering he sent? Thank you, sir. He sent Holy Spirit, who is our advocate. He's our intercessor, our counselor, our teacher, our strengthener, our standby. He is our mighty help. He's called alongside you to help you in every situation of life. We remember that Holy Spirit now lives and dwells inside of us and we remember today, we're remembering, we're reminding ourselves we're judging ourselves and saying, I'm going to pick that up. I'm going to daily cultivate. I'm going to increase. I'm going to have a more intimate relationship, real relationship with Holy Spirit. And I desire to avail myself. We desire to avail ourselves to the person, the purpose, and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Amen. In each, if you're born again, he's there. We remember that because of Jesus, 1 John 4, 4 says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You're of God, little children, and you overcome 
Whatever you need to overcome, the greater one lives in you. The advocate, the intercessor, the one who knows just how to pray for things. The strengthener, when you feel faint, when you feel like I just can't go on, guess what? He grabs a hold of you, he takes together, he says, you, we can do this. Amen. I'm strengthening you with might by my spirit in your inner man. And we'll walk through this together. Amen? Amen? And his resurrection is your resurrection. His victory is your victory. God is amazing. If, if we need to pray those prayers in Ephesians and Colossians that God will open the eyes of our understanding that he'll give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we can see and know everything that he's done for us. Amen? Hallelujah. That's why on that same night, the very same night that he taught him about communion, that he taught him about the Holy Ghost, he also taught the disciples on that very same night in John 14, 12. He said, uh, truly, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and even greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. How do we do those works? How do you do the works that Jesus did? How do you do even greater works than he did? did? Did the disciples do more miracles while Jesus was with them or after he left? They did more miracles when the whole, it was true what Jesus said. And Jesus didn't say this is just for the disciples. That's right. He said, whosoever believes the works that I do. If you believe in Jesus, he has works for you to do. He has works for you to do. He wants to, he wants to minister his love, his power, his spirit through each of us. And to do that, he sent Holy Spirit, someone just like Jesus. Is that amazing? I don't know, that should stir you up. It stirs me up. Because it stirs me up because I think, man, I have fallen short. There's more for me to do. I may not have as many years left, but bless God, I want to see all his plans, all his purposes for my life accomplished. Amen? And it only comes through a relationship with the Holy Spirit and through yielding ourselves to him. We do the works that he did and even greater works through the ministry of the greater one that's in us, the mighty Holy Spirit. So today, let's examine ourselves. Let's search our hearts. And let's ask ourselves the question, am I daily, am I daily looking to the greater one in me to lead me and to guide me? Am I relying upon his wisdom and counsel in all the affairs of my life. Let us repent and turn to him. Let us cultivate a living, vital relationship with him every day. He came to live with us, to indwell us forever. That means even when you really mess up, he didn't move out. He didn't say, hey, that's it. I had enough of you. He's just there waiting like, man, I, got, I can help you. If you just look to me. Amen. So that said, while we were worshiping God, and I, I was going to say it, but the Holy Spirit said, this is, this is for communion today. He said that there is an anointing 
There is a wave. There is an anointing. Do you know the Bible says this? It says, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all. Forget not all. I said, forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all, I always personalize it, all my iniquities. Do you know what an iniquity is? It's a habitual. Habitual. It's not like, you know, you got angry and you, you know, cursed. It is a habitual. He forgives all my habitual sins. And the Lord spoke to me, and I was going to give it out, and he said, I want you to give this right out at communion. That there's an anointing here to deliver people of habits, of addictions, of things that, of iniquities. Things that, you know, listen, I know we all, you know, we think of drugs or alcohol. You know, food can be an addiction. Oh, Food can get a hold of you. I know, I'm battling it right now. But there is, a, there is an anointing to deliver you. If you have an addiction, you have, a, you have a habit that you're not, you know. But it just seems like yeah, I try, I try. I believe the Holy Spirit is here today. And in, this, in the power, as we take this communion by faith, that anointing will enter your life and deliver you from any habit that you want to be delivered from. If you're going to hang on, but if you want to, just judge it and say, Lord, I'm receiving that today. I'm receiving. That same power that you felt in the worship is available right now through this communion. It's available. It is available, amen? Amen. I just want to give an invitation because we have people watching online. I don't know who is. But uh, if today, if you've never accepted Jesus, if you've never uh, uh, surrendered your heart to him, or if today you had surrendered your heart, but you, you know you've just gotten caught up in all kinds of stuff and sins and maybe drugs and Maybe you had some kind of relationship go bad or something like that, and, and you're, you've just fallen away. God wants to restore that relationship, and he wants, if you've never accepted Jesus, he wants to have a real relationship with you. And Holy Spirit desires to take up residence in you. And so if you've never done that, I just want to give you that invitation. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but all you have to do is say, yes, God. And if, if you said that, then I just want you to repeat this prayer. And let's all repeat this prayer. Let's say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus come, into my come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Me of my sin. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, thank you that you died for me. I believe you are risen from the dead. And that you're coming back again to gather me with all the saints. Fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me a passion for the lost and a hunger for the things of God and a holy boldness to spread this good news. We pray in Jesus' name. Now, if you said that, welcome to the family. The moment you did that, Holy Spirit came to live, reside, and abide inside of you forever. He'll never move out. And, and if you had backslidden or fallen away from God, guess what? Welcome back. Now, today, just, just cultivate a daily living relationship with Holy Spirit. Amen?